On today's episode, we've got a flood of new Tesla updates coming at us from GigaFest in Berlin and Tesla's annual shareholders meeting. That means there are updates on Giga Berlin production time and volume, the new 4680 structural battery pack, the new paint shop, and Giga Beer. Then we're learning new details about Tesla moving their headquarters to Austin, Texas, new talk about the CyberQuad ATV, Tesla Insurance is also arriving in Texas, and some details on the new Megapack factory in California. And then we finally get to report that the full self-driving beta is actually rolling out to new users. So let's get going. Tesla hosted their GigaFest event at the new factory in Brandenburg, Germany on October 9th to show off their latest work to the local community and Tesla fans from all over. We got plenty of new updates on Tesla's future in Europe and beyond sprinkled into the factory tour and presentation by Elon Musk. It's now expected that Model Y production will begin in Germany as early as November and no later than December. This is great news after a long saga of delays, objections, and rethinks that have occurred around this project. Elon Musk said at the event that he expects the factory to reach its planned volume production no sooner than one year following the initial launch. According to Elon, starting productions is nice, but volume production is the hard part, adding that it will take longer to reach volume production than it took to build the factory. Tesla is hoping that the Berlin factory will ramp up to a production volume of 520,000 vehicles per year, making an average of 10,000 per week. And to reach this level of production, the factory will be producing one Model Y body every 45 seconds. Tesla says that this speed is thanks to what they call an army of robots that weld, rivet, and glue parts together with highly precise and fast movements. Tesla also gave us a new look at the next generation battery pack that will eventually be going into those Model Y vehicles. As part of the factory tour, there was a cross section of a structural battery pack loaded with 4680 cells to look at. It's a very cool piece of engineering and everything appears to be more or less the same as the original renderings that we first saw a year ago. The only noticeable difference is the thin strips of metal that run sideways across the pack. It looks like they're contoured to hold the cells in place and maybe act as a heat sink. Then we also get to see the closed battery pack with the seat mounts attached to the top and the front and rear castings on each end. It's so compact and simple, it's crazy to think that this is the entire structure of an SUV in three pieces. There was actually a photo of the new Model S Plaid battery pack posted on Reddit just the other day that makes for a very interesting comparison. Even the latest version of the Model S still uses the 18650 battery cells that powered the very first version of the car back in 2012. And while the efficiency of the pack has improved by a lot over the years, we can see that the latest five module design still looks pretty archaic as compared to the sleek new structural pack for the Model Y. Also new from Giga Berlin is our first look at the latest colors from their ultra advanced paint shop. As usual with these kinds of things, the photos that we have to work with are absolutely terrible quality, but it's enough to get an indication of the new crimson red and deep blue colors. The new red is one I'm pretty excited for. It looks so deep and dark that it's almost black. A Model S Plaid in this shade would definitely be dope as hell. Not that I could afford one, but it's fun to dream. The new blue looks very blue, like almost electric. Definitely a good one if you like to make a statement and pull a lot of attention with your car. And finally, out of GigaFest Berlin, we get Tesla's latest product announcement and it's very exciting. Giga Beer. The follow-up to Tesla Tequila that we didn't know we needed is coming soon. Of course, it's more about the container than it is the actual booze, so Giga Beer comes in a ludicrously over-engineered beer bottle that has Cybertruck-esque hard angles and some kind of crazy square cap. 
We laugh now, but we'll inevitably be scrambling to cop one on eBay once this drops. Before we continue, I'd like to thank NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Right now, you can use code the Tesla space to get a two year plan plus four additional months with a huge discount. NordVPN is incredibly easy to use, and with over 5,200 servers in 60 countries, NordVPN is the fastest VPN on the market. In addition to keeping your internet connection private and more secure, NordVPN allows you to watch content not available in your country due to geoblocking. And for users dealing with bandwidth throttling, NordVPN encrypts all your traffic, so your internet service provider can't slow down your streaming speed. And for the gamers looking to save a few dollars, NordVPN can help you find discounts in other regions, so you have 60 countries to choose from. We strongly encourage our viewers to keep their data and internet connection protected, and that's why we always use a VPN, especially while using public Wi-Fi, so go to nordvpn.com slash the Tesla space to get a two year plan plus four additional months with a huge discount. Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video and everyone who supports the channel and our sponsors. Next up, we're talking about the latest Tesla shareholders meeting and what we learned there. Not nearly as exciting as Giga Berlin, but still some interesting points. For one, Tesla is officially moving their headquarters out of California and into Texas. Not a surprise by any means, we all knew this was coming, but a little surprising to see it happen so quickly. Elon made his mind up last spring that he was done with California and said that he would be taking his business elsewhere. You probably all remember the fight between Elon and the state government over whether Tesla should be allowed to keep building cars while the virus spread. Regardless of whether he was right or wrong or whatever, doesn't really matter, but by the end of that year, Tesla had begun construction on their second US factory in Austin, Texas, and now a year after that, they are officially moving the company operations to that same city. Elon simply said that Tesla, quote, took it as far as they could in the Bay Area. Elon stressed that this does not mean Tesla is out of California in any other capacity, in fact, it's pretty much the opposite. Tesla still intends to increase the vehicle production volume of their Fremont plant by 50% over the coming years. And on top of that, Tesla is building their first mega pack factory in California as well. This is a brand new development in Lanthrop that kind of took everyone by surprise when the mayor of the city shared photos of the groundbreaking in late September. Elon said in the meeting that this new factory will ramp up to producing 40 gigawatt hours worth of mega pack battery units. By comparison right now, the company is producing about four gigawatt hours worth of energy storage products, including mega pack, power wall and power pack. So jumping up to 40 per year of just the mega pack would be a massive leap in terms of Tesla's energy division. One other thing that Elon confirmed would be coming to Texas is Tesla's car insurance product. According to what Musk said, Tesla insurance should be rolling out in Texas around the same time that this video gets published. Tesla claims that their insurance premiums are up to 30% cheaper than competing firms, and this would be the first time it's been available outside of California. It also sounds like Texas will be the first area to get the real-time insurance calculator function rolled out. Elon says that they haven't been allowed to do that in California for some reason, but Texas is notoriously thin on regulations, so it's likely that the same safety score beta software that is currently being used to evaluate people for full self-driving will make its way into Tesla insurance. Elon says, quote, we want to have the kind of real-time insurance where your insurance costs are based on your actual driving history, which is the right way to do it, end quote. It also sounds like Tesla is hopeful that their insurance coverage will get approval for a national rollout by the end of next year. Something that we did not expect to hear about in this meeting but came as an interesting surprise was the CyberQuad ATV. That's the one that they drove up into the bed of the Cybertruck at the launch event back in 2019. That original that was on stage was not actually a Tesla product, it was just a Yamaha ATV that was modified to run on batteries. But Elon has kept up the rumors 
that Tesla will actually build these to accompany the new Cybertruck. In his latest statement, Elon said, we definitely will be making Cybertruck at Giga Austin and so probably the ATV too. The ATV is an interesting design challenge because ATVs are pretty dangerous and we want to make an ATV that is the least dangerous ATV. Elon alluded that Tesla has a plan to make their cyber quad as safe as possible by keeping the center of gravity super low and modifying the suspension to make it quote, really hard to roll. Finally, bringing some closure to a saga that we have been covering for almost the entire year, the full self-driving beta software is now open for new users. This is something that was supposed to have happened back in March, but ended up getting pushed back on nearly a weekly basis, and it's been a fun story to keep coming back to on the show here. This is actually one of those cases where delaying the launch of the product was a really good idea on Tesla's side of things. They didn't rush it to try and appease customers or media or anyone else. They waited until it was safe and ready. Respect for that one. Beta version 10.2 has been widely regarded by experienced FSD testers as a big improvement to the self-driving function of the car. They're finding it smooth, confident, and stable. Plus, the driver monitoring functions seem to have been ramped up. One tester actually noticed that the car disabled autopilot because he was holding his cell phone during the trip. So it sounds like the perfect time to start bringing in some new users. The latest software began rolling out to new users in the early hours of October 11th, with only about 1,000 of those drivers having a perfect Tesla safety score of 100 for a period of 100 miles being let in on day one. Elon has said that Tesla will continue to add about 1,000 new users per day, beginning with the top percentile of safety scores and eventually working their way down. Unfortunately, as you know, we are Canadian, so we sadly have to keep watching from the sidelines as everybody else starts getting to experience a real self-driving car. If you're in the beta testing group already, please let us know about your experience so far and we can live vicariously through you. Also, I'm interested to know how many of you are going to try and get your hands on some Giga Beer, so let me know in the comment section down below. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up. It's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.